and welcome to this week's edition of It's Your City. I'm your host, Courtney Bloomer, and we're here in the studios at the Brewery Arts Center with my guest for this week, Kathy Bartos of Partnership Carson City. Thank Thanks you. for being with us, Kathy. I'm a pleasure to be here today with you, Courtney. You're one of my best, my best people. <laughs> welcome. Uh, so let's start out by telling everybody a little bit about your organization, Partnership Carson City. Um, what, what do you do here in, in Carson City, and, and who else is part of the partnership? Thank you. Partnership Carson City has uh, been in existence actually since 1989. It started off with the name um, Community Council on Youth. And then around 2005, Partnership Carson City as an ad hoc committee underneath the mayor was created to address significant problems with methamphetamine in Carson City. The initial mission of Community Council on Youth was very much focused on substance abuse and substance abuse prevention. So the two agencies really merged together with the 501c3 nonprofit status of the Community Council on Youth, supported by the key stakeholders that were involved with Partnership Carson City. And we decided to keep the name of Partnership Carson City for this newly formed organization right around 2007. So Partnership Carson City, CCOY, has been in existence uh, since 1989. And the main emphasis of the organization is to be the community coalition. And I get asked all the time, so what, what is a coalition? And I've really tried to come up with sort of a snazzy uh, description of it. And really, the best thing I can come up with is within this community, we have a number of very dynamic, um, very well run nonprofit organizations and government entities like community, I mean, uh, Carson City Health and Human Services and our Sheriff's Department that all do fantastic work. So let's pretend that those are like beautiful marble tiles and you put them all on a counter and they're held together by grout. PCC, a coalition is the grout. We're what brings all these different entities together to turn them into something really really useful, uh, really effective, really cost effective, and that collaborate and work together to solve community-based problems. So that's essentially one of the main roles of Partnership Carson City is to bring people together to solve um, issues or challenges that are presented to the community. One of the main ones that we deal with um, and most of our state and federal funding um, comes for is substance abuse. So we really try to stay on top of things such as underage drinking, prescription drug abuse, and of course, methamphetamine, heroin, marijuana. We have a number of, of these issues that we try to, to deal with. So although the role of, of Partnership Carson City has morphed a little bit from yes. the original Carson City Council on Youth, uh, still maintaining a really strong focus on that original mission mm -hmm. of, uh, of preventing drug abuse and, and drug use here in our community. Yes, and, and, and actually we've had to expand beyond because when you look at the whole issue of substance abuse, it's not just a matter of telling people, well, this is dangerous or this is going to hurt you in this way or this is illegal. We really need to get to some of the root causes of what attracts people to, to substance abuse and what do, they find, um, what do they find good about being impaired. And those are the issues that we really try to get to. In the case of prescription drugs, usually it begins with pain and a pain medication, and that moves on from there. With others, it's curiosity. With others, it might be peer pressure. So we try to look at a number of these, of these issues together to, when we're working with people. And what's most Im important here, I think, Courtney, for people to understand, is that children aren't the one that create the drug climate. They are often the victims of a drug climate. The one, people that control the environment are the adults. And so we really target a lot of our educational programs towards the adults in the community to look at their behaviors, to understand their knowledge of these issues. I realize they change every day, um, but it's really the responsibility of the adults to create a climate that isn't tolerant of, of drug abuse and supports more healthy decisions through a lot of opportunities, um, increasing motivation and success of our kids. And you touched on something really important there, which is promoting health in our community, yes. which is something that your organization uh, does really well. And um, Partnership Carson City sort of serves as a, uh, a go-to organization for, for connecting other organizations mm -hmm. and connecting people to resources. Uh, talk a little bit about how, 
how you and your staff work to make those connections? Well, I think one of them was, um, actually, it, Courtney was started by Carson City Health and Human Services. It was the Community Action Agency Network. And that uh, started by bringing a few of the key folks together who were um, representing nonprofits to talk like together once a month. So when I came on board um, working with Frances Ashley, who had initiated a lot of that, we realized that we needed to give people a good reason for coming that filled them up. Our nonprofit people work very, very hard to do a lot for very little. And most of them have the skills and the talents to go and work at jobs that would pay them three times as much um, based on how capable they really are. But they choose to do what they're doing. So we now turn the CAN meeting into a meeting that's about them. They come once a month. We feed them breakfast. We have a guest speaker there for them that will give them the information that maybe they've been wanting to hear more about. And when they leave, they leave filled up. But while they're there, they're talking to each other, they're getting to know each other, they hear the updates from each other. And this is really important because nonprofits work so hard on so little, they tend to get into their own bubble and they're spinning their wheels trying to keep their own organization alive and functioning. But by creating a connectivity between others, they realize, hey, they've got some services for my clients that I don't need to recreate that wheel. I can go work with them. Right. So now I've seen um, over the last two, three years, Organizations that didn't even know each other existed are now buddies. They come in, they grab their coffee, they grab their food, and I'm having to shoo them out of the kitchen and go, hey, go sit down. we got to get started now with our meeting. Right. And it's really turned into what we call the CAN family. And so now we have anywhere from 35 to 50 people showing up um, for these monthly meetings. So that has really been, I think, a boon to their services is that, is that connection. So that's one way. The other way is... By looking at our website, we have a service directory on there now right. that we can keep updated through electronics, the, the beauty of electronics. I stay away from the computer. I'm not young enough to, <laughs> that's to not have your to. Part. That's no, that's <laughs> definitely not my part. I have millenniums on staff to, to do those things for me. But they have kept this resource directory updated, and anybody can go on it just by going to partnershipcarsoncity.org and looking up resource directory, and they'll see it categorized fairly well, um, and we can keep it updated that way for anybody who is looking for services. And that is, that's not just other nonprofit organizations. Right. That might be community members who Absolutely. are uh, wanting to know where they can go for mm -hmm. child care or if they want to know where they uh, can go for information about yeah. things like drug abuse or things like that. They can log on to that community mm -hmm. resource guide. Um, give them the web address again. It's www.partnershipcarsoncity.org. Okay, that's .org, not .com. Correct. So um, go there, check it out. Great place for resources uh, for all different kinds of services yeah. that are offered yes. here in our community. Absolutely. So in a spirit of connecting people mm -hmm. to resources, you guys have a huge event coming up that Partnership Carson City is playing a really big role in, um, serving medically uh, uninsured or underserved people in our region. Now, yeah. that event's still a few months away. It's not until... October, but it's never too early to start planning and we need some volunteers. So tell everybody about uh, the remote area medical event. Yes, it's going to own me from now until October. <laughs> um, every waking hour will be, will be this event. Uh, RAM, Remote Area Medical, is actually based out of Tennessee. And it was started by Stan Brock, and many of you might remember him from his wild, wild animal shows. But he decided um, in his travels that he didn't like poverty and the effect it had on people in terms of accessing medical care. And he has initiated this RAM event and what they do, and what they're going to do on October 16th, 17th and 18th, that's a Friday, Saturday and Sunday, they're going to set up over 30 mobile dental chairs in the large gym at our high school and in the small gym ophthalmologist um, centers where people can have their vision tested and receive glasses. Uh, lens crafters are there. They bring out all of their, um, all of their demonstration lens. And um, RAM also brings out a large vision lab van. It's huge. It sits in the parking lot and takes these, these um, prescriptions for the, for the glasses and do them within a 24-hour period. So people can come and they can be seen by a dentist, they can be seen by um, an eye doctor, and they can also, we we'll also have medical triage there. So any of these situations where they're unable to access care, um, either through um, a lack of you know, insurance or, or whatever, they can line up and they come. And this is where um, it gets complicated. 
We have people lighting up um, starting at midnight. It's almost worse than the new iPad at Best Buy. They are lining <laughs> up with their sleeping bags and their chairs. At midnight, we open the gate to the school. They come in, and then we hand out numbers to the people for whichever service they want, and some of them need more than one of them. And when we run out of the numbers based on how many, how many uh, practitioners we have there providing the services, we have to turn the rest away. And we did this at Hug High School last year, and we probably turned away five, 600 people who were in line. We were allowed in, oh, about five, 600 each of the three days that we were, were doing this. Um, at Hug High School in Reno, we had quite a few people that came up from Carson City, which is why we decided we really want to get this um, into Carson. And before they come to Carson City, they are in Las Vegas the first weekend, and then they go to Yarrington. They'll be at Yarrington the weekend before us, and then they're bringing everything here on October 16th. We are in big, big need of dentists. We've um, had a good response from the medical community. We know we have dentists out there that would love to be able to do this, and we'll do it. We just want you to know about it and to sign up. Um, even if it's for a, a four-hour shift, we would really, really like to have you helping us with this. Now, Kathy, are you just wanting dentists or can dental hygienists come as well? We will take dental hygienists, dental assistants. Um, you're, all, you're all welcome. We had a number of dental hygienists that helped us uh, up in Reno, and they were busy all three days with people. Now, so. what other services are people going to be able to get? Will there be things like um, immunizations available at this event? We're going to try to have the immunizations available. We're looking at the mammogram van. We'll be there. We're going to have a number of our community-based services there with their information tables. Um, we're going to try and get people there that can help people sign up for Medicaid if this is something that maybe they're eligible for but um, haven't quite figured out how to navigate that system. So we're just beginning now to get all these aux you know, auxiliary services um, in place. You know, the biggest, of course, again, being the dental, medical, and vision uh, physicians there. Now, there may be people watching who want to help out in mm -hmm. some way, who are not dentists, who are not nurses. How can those people get involved? If they can, they're free to call me. I'll be happy to take your, uh, your name and number down, and I can um, show you how you can also go to ram.org, R-A-M dot O-R-G, and they will have uh, the events listed for Yarrington and Carson City and Las Vegas on there. And they can go on and sign up for the event that they would like to assist with, and they can sign up as general support. So those are the people that would help us sign people in. Um, I'm looking for very nocturnal people that will help us from the, um, the midnight to 6 a.m. shift, so, because that's when we're really going to be work intensive, getting people in the right. gate and, and in the line. and. And, um, and you mentioned, yeah. you know, this is this is like people lining up, you know, the night before on Black right. Friday or something for, yes. for to get the latest thing. But this isn't yes. the latest thing. This is just basic care that these people don't have mm -hmm. access to. So, mm -hmm. so this is a, a, a group of people who are coming here yeah. up to up to fifteen hundred people that we're going to be able to serve mm -hmm. who really don't have any way to yeah. to get. Uh, an infected tooth pulled or to have right. uh, to have glasses made for them or something. So this is really a great mm -hmm. opportunity for people mm -hmm. who live in our area to come right. and get these services. Right, exactly. It's a, it really is a great opportunity and you would be surprised at the myriad of people that we have standing in line. Um, you know, people who have been in chronic serious pain for a long time, others that, you know, hey, I just need to get this thing fixed but my, you know, my insurance doesn't cover dental, you know, and I don't have a thousand dollars or whatever to to do to get this fixed. You know, and our dentists in this community, I do have to say, are very, very good about seeing people, you know, pro bono. But we're looking at a lot of people here, and we're hoping that we can get a lot taken care of in this three-day period of time. So, Ram, coming to Nevada this, yes. this fall. Um, Yay. <laughs> if, if, you're, if you're interested in, in signing up, uh, mm -hmm. go to ram.org, or you can get in touch with uh, Kathy at Partnership for more yes. information. Yes, Partnership Carson City, 841-4730. We'll be happy to take your call and get you signed up. Absolutely, and also uh, for the event in Yarrington too, if, if they want to work yes. for both. Yes, Yarrington could really use the help as well. Now, uh, so, so Ram's a ways off yet, but you guys have some other things that are happening between uh, now and then. You yes. just had the prescription drug roundup. That's yes. something that you guys work on every year. Mm -hmm. And you've got a speaker coming in June. Tell us a little bit about that. Yes. And this again goes along with the same issue around prescription drug um, abuse, which is huge. And the reason it's huge is um, prescription drugs uh, for pain are predominantly opioids, which come very similar to the opium plant, which is heroin. 
and we're seeing a, a problem with people who get addicted to their pain medications and are unable to access them anymore because our doctors are getting very diligent about that and are looking for people who are what we call doctor shopping and um, they're not getting the, the pills. So we have people lurking around now who do have heroin and are happy to provide that, that pain relief for you in the form of heroin. It's cheaper than prescription medications and um, it's very a misunderstood drug. So this sounds very dangerous. It does, it, and it is. And, and the Sheriff's Office is doing its best to keep up with the tide of that along with methamphetamine, which is always lurking lurking there in the underbelly. So um, it, it is a, a big issue, but we also understand pain and the need for pain management. So Dr. Mel Pohl is a national expert in this. We're fortunate to have him right here in Nevada, in Las Vegas. He is going to be coming to Carson City and giving us actually three presentations. The first one is open to the public, and that is June 18th, and it will be here at the Brewery Arts Center from 6 to about 8 o'clock, and he'll be speaking on medications, addiction, and pain management is the topic of his conversation. The next morning, he'll be going to our CAN meeting and filling up our, our nonprofits at, you know, who are members there with that information. And then at noon, we're doing one specifically for criminal justice professionals who are helping people who have gotten into burglary, crime, to sustain their, their, their addiction, pain medication, right. I mean, addiction habits, and, and helping them understand the nature of the beast with these individuals that they're working with. You know, you have the, the beautiful housewife that you would never believe is an addict who is now sneaking into her next door neighbor's house and raiding her medicine cabinet. And that isn't who she is. Um, it's, this is the addiction and people need to understand this. So it'll be, we have these three events coming up and I would urge people to come on June 18th to the Brewery Arts Center at six o'clock and, and hear Dr. Pohl speak. Fantastic, so it sounds yeah. like you guys have a lot going on. Yes. Partnership Carson City is uh, diligent and, and dedicated and is providing such an important service to, to the community here <laughs> yeah. in Carson City. Yeah. Kathy, thanks so much for being with us today. You're welcome. That's all the time we have that went by so quickly. It did. That went by so quickly. Thank you for joining us and thanks to all of you for joining us this week for It's Your City. We'll see you again next week.